Hi, I'm Mika. How are you? You all right? Yes, I'm ready when you are. Yeah, I'm waiting for you to say hi, guys. Oh, I didn't know it was recording. Hi, guys. I'm Mika. I'm here with Peter, and we're making a podcast today. Where's that little American accent come from? <laughs> Every time you say Peter, you put an American accent I on. I know it's because I lived in New York and LA, and now some of the words I say are warped. A warped. <laughs> yeah, you need to go to Europe. You really I do. do. I do. <laughs> So yes, um, Mika's filling in. I think we've got two more weeks without Beck. I so. know. I'll try my best again. Not Beck, not as amazing as her, but I will oh, try. Oh, stop it. <laughs> That's fine. People just watch Beck to watch her open things. That's what to I watch her open things. Oh, she's the world's worst person at opening anything. Opening doors, opening cans, <laughs> opening everything. Oh my God. She even one night when we are in Europe, yeah, she recorded something for her... Um, her uh, what's it, Instagram? Yeah, she couldn't work out how to turn the lights off in the <laughs> hotel room, and she spent twenty minutes trying to work out how to turn the lights you off. You should cut up all the videos of her trying to open things and put them all together. Well, she's already got a lot. We <laughs> should do it because just doors. It, normally, we need, normally need to stay in the place for three or four days before she can open the front door. That's so funny. She, it's pretty funny. And opening bottles of wine. Well, she's so used to screw tops. Yeah, she can't like. Oh my gosh. The last trip we went to Europe, she could, didn't know how to use a corkscrew. <sighs> but that was just Beck. Anyway, it's not a dish on, even though it's fun dishing on Beck. <laughs> so if anybody who doesn't know Mika, Mika's been modeling since you're like three. Yeah, since I was three years old. And I think the first time I met you, you might have been 11 or 12. Yeah, I think 12. 12, yeah, I can't remember. And Maybe I, 11. Could have been, but I only shot you every couple of years, only because um, I need you to grow and be a person. I didn't yeah. want to be getting into your face about modelling and I just rather you come in every now and then, we do a shoot and just let you go. And then once you hit about 16, then I was more interested in... Yes. There's a lot can change, but as Beck says, you're living her dream. Yes. Because <laughs> it's what Beck wanted to do when she was 18, 19. You're, yeah. you're 19 now, aren't you? I'm 19, 19 now, 19. yeah. Moved away when I was 17, did South Korea at 14. I've just been travelling the world ever since. Yeah, I'd never forget watching something, it might have been live. Yeah. With someone standing on your back holding you underwater. Yeah. <laughs> it was in South Korea. South Korea. And they had electric lights yeah. moving around above. The, if they'd fallen in, you would have been electrocuted. I would have, I would have died, yeah. But it was so cold outside, I don't know. Was it minus 15 degrees outside or something like that? And they had me in the swimming pool. It was an underwater shoot in South Korea. And yeah, they were holding lights, strobe lights, and live streaming it. And um, everyone was commenting, Peter, as well. Oh my gosh, if those fall, she's going to die. die. They were like holding me with someone's hand where the camera couldn't see it under the water so that I could stay under oh, for she the photos because it kept floating top. up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, but as much as some of that time was horrible, it gave you a good learning to what the industry is. Oh you? yeah. You're basically a model I is call just... South Korea, you know, as well, I'm sure China and Japan. Oh, China, the... So model boot camp yeah. is what we call it. Model boot camp is where you go to learn absolutely everything. Once you've done South Korea, once you've done China, once you've done, you know, Japan, you're fine anywhere you go. Yeah, because it's basically you're going to get the worst in the world. Yes, they overwork you. you. It's crazy. But it, that's, don't you think that's what, I know it's really bad what they do, but it's when I used to train years ago, like 20 or 15 years ago when I was training people and even training back, I was sort of like, you've got to realise that you're just a moving manic and they don't care. Yes, yes. They'll say things about you while you're standing yeah. right there. Walking coat hanger. Walking, well, and yeah, and uh -huh. they don't respect you have feelings, you're not allowed to feel the heat, you're not allowed to feel the cold. No, you just have to... You're not allowed you know? to get tired. No, you're not. Your shoes are too small, doesn't matter. <laughs> don't complain. What size foot are you? I'm a size nine and a half. But so you're a half, a, yeah. half a size too big. But in South Korea, my feet were huge. I had blisters everywhere. I, my whole foot was covered in bandages and band-aids. Yeah, because samples only come in one size. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But nine and a half makes you a good catwalk model. Yes. But have you actually ever done proper? I haven't done much runway. I mean, I did uh, two runway shows for guests recently. Did you enjoy but, it? Yeah, I did enjoy it. I just haven't gotten into real fashion. I do a lot of like commercial modeling right now. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I'm still surprised that you, that Snobby's actually grabbed you and thrown you on to. But I also haven't done like show runway uh, castings. Ever. Right. I've never been in the show packs. Right. I think. Is Maybe it the agencies year. don't see you like that? No, they think that I'm high end commercial right. right now. Yes, which I am, <laughs> if you see me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you just, is this your first big campaign you won? Um, yes, I have two guest campaigns coming out. I, the denim campaign is probably the biggest one, and I just did the active campaign as well, which is, they're both coming out in September, and they were both shot in Liguria in Italy. Yeah, So, super lovely. excited for them. Yeah, that was cool. That's so cool. I know, I'm excited. <laughs> so you enjoy that work much better than yes, your normal work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is what I keep saying to a lot of models. It's the e-com is only something to pay your bills. It's That's a really all. good money-making thing, e-com, for sure. But it's only going to pay your bills. Yes. It's never going to make you famous. No. And you're not going to be able to retire on it. No. Yes, you won't be. So to, the next step is picking up campaigns, which you pick up a couple of good campaigns and yeah, you just, you just go, uh, how do I make, how do I make all this money all of a sudden? Like, <laughs> where did this come from? I know that there was a, a model Kylie that I first shot when she was 15 and she had major problems and she rang up one day or she got, I rang her because she was all upset because they cut her hair for a catwalk. Yeah. And she used to have like surfy blonde hair, uneven, messy. And that was her sort of, she had that surfy yeah. chick look and they cut it up to a bob. Perfect. Oh we, I think they even gave her a fringe. Yeah. And she was devastated. And I was sort of saying, well, who cuts for a catwalk? And then I, then I find out. It was for Stella McCartney. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> and she also worked for walked for Chanel. Chanel, And she yeah. also walked for, I think, McQueen. She walked for, like, five major. And then she went to London. Then she went to Paris. Then she returned to Milan. Yeah. Transformed her. Instantly. And I said, well, how much are you getting paid for that show? She goes, I've got 20000 for that show. And you're complaining about a haircut. Yes. Oh but I don't gosh. think she, she never did boot camp. Right. She went from LA to New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And LA she didn't York. like the, uh, she didn't last long in the um, model houses, did you? No, you know, I've only really lived in a model house in South Korea. And even then I was living with two um, girls from Brazil and they were very, very lovely. Um, I'm still friends with them now, but... I don't like living in model apartments. So I haven't been in a proper model apartment yet? No. I've always had Airbnb or apartments. Yeah. No, You're it, so lucky. I know. I'm very lucky. I think Kylie's first one was like eight or nine girls. There's only two bedrooms, they were bunks, and there's only one shower and one toilet. That's crazy, right? You're living on top of each other and they all eat well, each other's food. And, and well, yeah, they do. <laughs> I've and heard nightmare stories, yeah. so I stay away from the Steal other model people's apartments. food and yeah. then they sabotage you if yeah. they think that you're going to get you're more work. You're all competing work. at the end of the day. So. Yeah, I know in Miami, one of the Australian models, they hit her passport so she couldn't catch That's a plane. That's awful. I heard a story about a girl when I was in South Korea. They, one of the other models, the day she left, she cut up the girl who was doing really well, cut up all of her clothes and just got on a plane and left. Yeah. That's horrible. It's so awful. Hopefully there's a thing called karma yeah. and it'll come back and bite them. Mm. Okay. Anyway, so you made your move from comfort home where your mum does everything for you. Yes. Your taxi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you've got it's your Airbnb, you've got your Uber service, you've got Uber Eats, you've got everything. Yes. How did you cope at first at where first, you had to, had to cook? At first it was really hard adjusting. Like my dishes would pile up in the sink. My bed wouldn't magically get made, you know. I couldn't call dad to like kill a spider for me. I had to do everything by myself. So it was kind of overwhelming at the start. But now I have my system and I know how I like to do things. And um, I've worked it out. I've got it down packed. And now when I come home and mom's telling me to do things all at once, I'm like, mom, I'll do it when, when I want to do it. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. When you're home, you go back to your old ways. And yeah. When you travel, mm -hmm. so what about cooking? What about food? And that was cooking. I'm still not an amazing cook. I have a couple things that I know how to make, but um, yeah, I'm definitely not a chef. But do you do do you do it in a batch so you can just reheat it for a couple of days? Uh, or? Some things, and then some things I just buy from the grocery store and just microwave it oh. and then eat that. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Uber Eats. Uber Eats. Yes. Oh my god. I love Uber Eats. Well, don't, yeah, sorry, I just hear all the nightmare stories. I've never had Uber Eats myself. Really? Why? 
well, they don't come where I live, mm. for number one. And number two, all I hear is all the horror stories. I haven't heard any horror stories. Oh, when stuff turns up and someone's taking a bite out of something. Oh, gross. Yeah, or it's always missing something. Yeah. Yeah, it is always missing something. It or, and it turns up late and it's cold. Yeah, that happens as Or they well. said it's been delivered and it hasn't been delivered. No, yeah, there's a lot of those things for sure. I get that. So in Europe, what was the difference from Europe to America? Like the industry, your, how you were living? I think of? America right now likes edgier looking models, a bit more cool, something cool about you, like a cool haircut, some piercings, you know? An edgy, really? Yeah, edgier looking face. And then Europe is more, I think they're into the classically, um, I don't know what the right word is, classically. Classic beauty? Yeah, classic beauty right now. I think so I when did, you're talking about classic, you're talking about the, the 90s, 80s, yeah. 90s, or you're talking like about the 50s, 60s, 90s. the 80s to 90s, yeah. the supermodel. Because that's how everyone was shooting me when I was there. And I was working quite a lot in yeah. Europe. So I think that was definitely my, more my market than America. America was still so great uh, for the experiences. I did so much in America. I went to the NBA, I went to the hockey, I went, you know, to every single concert there was. I went to the oh, Super Bowl after parties. I went to Taylor Swift concerts. Taylor Swift concerts. Oh. I did so much in LA. And then in New York, I made all my best friends and I, I worked in New York quite a bit. Um, but Milan has definitely been the best for me and Berlin as well. Berlin's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Did you get to the clubs? Uh, no, I didn't because it was so cold. Oh. <laughs> it was freezing outside. You were there when the same time we were there. Uh, well, not we weren't in Berlin. We were in Europe. Oh yes. Although we found when it might have been when we were in Spain because when we were in Spain it was cold. Yeah. I've never been to Barcelona and been cold before. No. Never. I and I've cold. never been to um, Amsterdam and been hot. <laughs> so we're like having 32 and 33 degree days in Amsterdam and like 16, 17 days in Barcelona. It was yeah. crazy. No, I was um Berlin when I was there. It was like one degree, maybe minuses as well. Super cold. So I wasn't going to the club very often. Yeah, I, I went to that. one club, but it wasn't a popular club. I just went with a couple of my friends. Yeah. Um, it was nice. No, I just got. I know quite a few models that love Berlin for the clubbing scene, mm -hmm. but they there's a couple of very famous clubs that you go in on a Thursday and you yeah, leave like on a Sunday. Yeah, and like Kit Kat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that some of these clubs is you know if you're famous you can't get in. No, yeah, you can't. Yeah, if you're famous, it's, no, sorry, you're not coming in. They don't in. care. They don't want famous people no. in there because that wrecks the whole vibe of the club. Exactly. Yeah, it's crazy. So what's a, so you, with your living and things like that, was it much different from being in America? No. Uh, so you just Airbnb'd and beat, or did they have your in sort of model housing? I Airbnb'd and then I found an apartment. I lived at this place, it was beautiful. Um, and I became friends with everyone in the building. We did like cute little cookouts on the roof every week. Like it was really nice. My building had every single amenity you could think of. Um, but in terms of difference, no, I feel pretty like the way the you live, it was pretty much the same for me. Yeah. The grocery store was difficult. I'd go in there and I couldn't understand anything. Oh, don't <laughs> you hate that? So annoying. But didn't I'd you have to like use Google Translate, yeah, look like on your an phone? idiot, walk, walk around and like, hold filming it up to things see what to it see is. what it is. We, we couldn't work out butter once. We couldn't work out what was butter. Yeah, no, I had a few things I struggled with, but... Um, yeah, I actually made a friend when I was in the grocery store one time. I was looking at av avocados and he was also trying to find the... The right one. Right ones. And um, he goes in New German, he's speaking to me. I was like, I don't speak German. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but we ended up being good friends. So that was Did nice. he speak English? Yeah, as well. As I was going to say. <laughs> but do you find it really weird, and I was commenting about this with Anna, that when we're in Europe, like, I can't speak English properly, let yeah. alone speak any other language. Yeah. But everyone says, oh, sorry, my English is terrible. Well, sorry, I don't speak any German. No. Or I don't speak, but they always apologise that I they know. can speak some, but it's not very good, whereas we should be apologising. Sorry, be. we yeah, cannot sorry. speak We're a single word. We're selfish, yeah. and, you know. No, for sure. And there it's common, like, for them to speak two languages, three languages, four yeah, languages. Yeah, what was your second language at school? I did Chinese, Chinese and then I did that Japanese. Would be, yeah, my yeah. kids did Japanese. Yeah, but 
I didn't learn anything. <laughs> like, I, I can count to ten. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's help. That's handy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all right, so next step, photographers, are they different in different parts of the world? Like yes. just more in the way that they treat models and how they direct you or not direct you? Yeah, well, I found when, especially on set in like Italy or on set in Germany, you're, for me, I was the odd one out and I was the only one that spoke English. So on set all day, no one speaks English. So you're just sitting there like... <sighs> <laughs> trying to read the Could hand gestures. Could they speak gestures. any English at all? Yeah, they can, but why would they? I mean, it's their second language and everyone else speaks their first language. No, but if you're, you're modeling for the photographer, he'd obviously speak English. He tries, English, yeah, so. he would try. Um, but, yeah, it became, for me, I would have to try and learn how to read hands and, you know, try and learn body language, facial emotions, instead of just listening, yep. which I found cool. By the end of it, I got pretty good at it. <laughs> so with photographers, do you, do you start picking up, they tilt their head like that, they want you to tilt yes. your head? uh-huh, yeah. Like they do it subtly, they don't even know they're doing it. I know, and, you know, and then oh, you're that's like, just, okay, this is I'll what just he mimic, to do. Yeah. And then he'll be like, do this, and then before he's even done it, I've done it. <laughs> yeah. But besides that, like, and just interested to hear, so the differences but yeah, throughout the world, because I always get told I'm so different, but I am completely different to 90% of yeah, photographers. Yeah, but you've worked everywhere, so I'm sure like you've picked up things from everywhere. Well, I'm only after one thing, eyes. Yeah, yeah eyes. And that's all I'm after. Yeah. And um, I know, especially when through the workshops and especially some of the uh, pro photographers I know and get to spend time with, they're so much about hold, hold, freeze, hold, yes. hold. Now make it look good, but don't move a millimetre. Yeah. And, you know, I can't get my focus. Don't move, don't move. But now make it pretty. But, oh, well, now in a lot of campaigns, also, like, they'll show you a picture of somebody. And they and want be you like, to copy do this. it. No way. This is how. And then we do it. All the girls and all the guys. Uh, yeah, sometimes with guests, sometimes you make up your own pose. But there's always inspiration boards, you know. Oh, yeah, no, mood board, but not, I wouldn't have thought they would have copied. Yeah, if they love, like, a picture. Which doesn't work. Yeah. But, I mean, I get it. For a lot of uh, brands, less with guests, but a lot of brands, they want a certain look, they're after something, and they're yeah, like, no, do I, this. I get that. But, and that's it. Um, I should, uh, if, I'll put a link in the description. There's a YouTube of a behind-the-scenes yeah. of a guest campaign that was shot in Mexico. And it's amazing. It was completely the opposite. Yeah. You could see zero direction. Yeah. You see, you just go like crazy. And I had guys just jump kicking and yeah. throwing yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's and how just, it is a lot of the time with yeah, and it's And it's these beautiful, natural movements. And even the models, you could just see, they weren't telling. They said, just go crazy. Just, yeah, yeah lose it. The models, are, Gas is so good. It's like a big family. Like all of the girls at Gas and all the guys at Gas now, I feel like they're family we see each other so often so it's yeah. nice yeah no they're a cool, cool brand mm. they are a cool brand i've always loved um i love a lot of the photographers they pick like some yeah. some of my favorite campaigns of photographers i like I really how they like. shoot the models like movie stars almost yeah feels well, much more like 90s and 80s supermodel vibes it also feels like scenes out of a movie yeah exactly it doesn't feel like a fashion Pre-posed up. Exactly. It feels like real life. Oh, movies aren't real life, but try to mimic real life. Exactly. That's how I feel about it too. It's nice. So have you done any other campaigns yet? Um, or have you got any in the pipe works? Or? There's a couple of beauty things I did in Milan. Um, I shot for Kiki. Kiko Skin, Kikos, yeah. yeah, Milan, um, the beauty brand, and they really liked me, so we'll see something cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to do a few questions okay. that everybody's going to want to know. Okay. You're skinny. Yes. I've only ever seen you skinny. Yes. But you eat lollies. <laughs> You love ice cream, isn't it? What's your... You, ice cream. I'm a chocolate. Chocolate. chocolate girl. That's yeah. right, a chocoholic. I am a chocoholic. I will pick chocolate over almost anything in this world. So. Right. So <laughs> the thing is just by... You don't go to gym and work out, do you? I 
am about to go to the gym and I'm work out. I'm about to. <laughs> Have you actually I'm ever get been? into it. Yes, I was going at the start of the year, like every day. I was like really into it, getting into my fitness. What, it was my doing... New Year's resolution. And then about like three months in, I was like, you know what? This sucks. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> bored of this. <laughs> so were you just doing cardio or were you doing weights so as well? So I would well, walk or... on the treadmill for like 45 minutes uphill. And then I would do a half an hour ab workout and then a half an hour booty workout. And that was every day. And, so, and then I would eat like... You Heaps know. of carbs to refresh you? Or? No. Oh, you were eating chicken eating and anything. stuff like that? I was like eating that. like really healthy things. Like I was a maid in the kitchen. I was like really into it, drinking so much water. And then I think one day I was just like so jet lagged. It was when I first got to LA. I just slept for four days and I was like, I don't feel like working out. <laughs> and you haven't worked out since? So I did my digitals. I did a couple workouts in LA, did my digitals. And then after that, I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> And I haven't really worked out since. But you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to the gym. <laughs> I tell my mom every day, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And do you do anything special for your skin? No, I have very reactive skin. So to chemicals? To, I think, or fragrances. Like, like perfumes and that? Yeah. So anything that has like a special smell in it, cream-wise, yeah. I think that it makes my skin break out. Um, so I've also always... I've always been very careful on what I'm using on my skin. Cetaphil is kind of the only thing that I trust because I break out very easily. What about on set when you, you don't have choice on that stuff? No, but they usually just use this one called Skin Food. Yeah. And it's really, really yeah. good. They put on first. Yeah. yeah. And they always so, ask me, is your skin reactive? Is it yeah. dry or is it oily? And I yeah. make my skin's dry and then they pick yeah. the proper products for me. So. No, so what, and do you, on a day-to-day -day basis, do you wear makeup? Not really, no. Yeah, that's why. Mm. So two of the worst things for skin is sun and, and makeup. Hiccup, yeah. Yeah, because it clo clo clogs your skin and your pores open up, you end yeah. up with all that pore But I find salt water is really good for my skin. Um, like whenever I'm in the beach, I think maybe it's a combination of the sun, but maybe it's bad as in for the future when your skin gets leathery <laughs> and wrinkly. But whenever but I'm do you in ever the get, sun... Do you, get sunburn, do you burn easy or do you no, just go tan? No, I get tan. <laughs> You're one of those people. I am one of those. You definitely get burned. <laughs> I no, what's really crazy is uh, there was a big part of my life I worked outside and worked outside all day yeah. long and didn't use sunscreen at all. Then all of a sudden... When you didn't work outside. When I started working in the fishing industry and I'm on boats all day, I literally was a white face with yeah. zinc cream. I had hats on, always yeah. had shirts on. Now, literally, especially in Melbourne, in summer, 15 minutes, I'm burnt. Yeah. Literally 15 it's minutes. It's crazy. I think your skin's just not used to it anymore, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's just crazy how it's changed. But I do I do see a lot of skin damage on models once they're hitting 25 to 30. Yeah. And it's normally their chest area. Right. Their chest normally, like this area here, normally looks like Age 10, first. 15 years old. Yeah, but it's the same with like the elbows and knees and your ankles. Always ages first. Well, and so with some of the girls I've noticed on their face, you'll mm. see areas that are covered up quite like their necks are really nice and maybe areas like here are really nice or but then you see other parts of their skin you say oh this is like yeah. you see the sun damage mm -hmm. yeah use sunscreen everyone <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you gotta be careful with that too because some of those sunscreens have chemicals chemicals in them things. which isn't yeah. good for you either so the whole world's not good for you no everything is bad <laughs> got, oxygen's the worst thing in the world yeah, depending on what type of oxygen you're breathing in. No, it's it's proven. Really? Yeah, oxygen Everywhere? causes cancer. The longer you breathe, the more chance you'll get cancer. Jesus. Whereas if you stop breathing now, you didn't get cancer. No, but you would die. Yeah, but you didn't get cancer. <laughs> but you died. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my stupidness. Um, so what's next? I know that you're wanting to get back into, uh, you want to get yeah. out of Australia, I understand that. Yes, I do. I don't know, maybe New York City for a little bit, LA as well, to keep my visas for America. And then I want to head back to Europe and live there permanently, hopefully in Milan. Uh, it's a little more expensive than Berlin though. So I'm not sure, I'll live out of Berlin and Milan. I love it there, I love my bookers, I love my agencies, so. So what agency are you with in Berlin? I'm with Iconic there. Oh. Yes. Amazing agency. Yeah, they're now, such good people too. Yeah. The so, nicest people. 
Every time I've been to Berlin, they just open me open arms. I used to do work for them many years ago, training yeah. the younger girls, like the yeah. girls that are still final year of school, a hand cut working. Yeah. They'd book me for one hour sessions. Yeah. Just getting into them, just simple little things like yeah. what we're doing today. Yeah. The difference your feet will make to how you look. Yeah. So silly They're little a great agency and the people. Yeah. And they've got some pretty amazing models. Yeah, they like really Luma do. is one of my favourite yeah. models in the world. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And Milan, who are you with in Milan? I'm with Select. Select. Mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't, haven't worked with them, but I've worked I with... I like Select. My uh, book of Fabio, he's been so sweet to me. So sweet. Yeah, he's the best. And he's always uh, calling, making sure I'm okay after shoots, asking me if my shoot is going well, uh, if I'm comfortable. Like, it's been really nice working with him. It's good to have someone to, like I said to you many years ago, if you're ever on a shoot and they want you to do something you don't want to do, ring me. Yes. Because then I know because they're ringing me yeah. that you don't want to do it. Yes. And I, would just, I was, what I was pretending I was your manager. Yes. Because I knew if I got a phone call, it was meant, it, the phone call was mean to say, no. No, I don't want to do she's, it. She's not allowed yeah. to do that. But so in, you, that agency actually does that for you. Yes. That's amazing. Yes, yeah, so sweet. Good people. So you ever, and any other agency ever done that for you? Yeah, all of them I know if I called them and I told them, hey, I'm not feeling comfortable with this, they would be but there. But I've never had an agency that reach you out up. and ask me if I'm yeah. comfortable, which is different. No, that's awesome. Yeah. That's actually a really good agency. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I'm happy with them. No, I appreciate it. Well, it's, it's you're there, um, what they sell. They don't need their goods damaged. Yes, exactly. Right? And yeah, it's so important for that protection, which it doesn't seem to be the protection it used to be. No. It yeah. just it seems a little bit, especially some agencies, it's all about money. Yeah. It's all about turnover and money and... Yeah, and I feel like that's something I'm really lucky with. A lot of my agencies, all of my agencies, really, they've really taken care of me. Yeah. Yeah. But they need to. Yes, they do. <laughs> because you're, you're what's making the money. <laughs> exactly. All right, in five years, where do you want to be or what do you want to be doing? Like, what, know, what's your years. goal? What's your like short term goal? Short term goal. I want to be a beauty girl. I want to do some really cool beauty campaigns and I want to maybe live in Paris or somewhere in Italy full time. I don't know if I ever end up getting my license, maybe living in Switzerland, super close to Italy, just like, you know, around like Como somewhere, super beautiful. Imagine waking up and that's your view every morning. Oh, you know, Switzerland's to die for. Oh my gosh, I just yeah. wouldn't feel no. real. Um, and you haven't even been to the Alps yet. No, I haven't. I need oh, to. Ne next time you go there, you've just got to take a day off yeah, and do it. Yeah, just do it. I need to do even it. Even a train trip around the lake. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to do it. <laughs> and uh, that little town up we stay in St. Maurice, not yeah. Maurice, Maurice. You can get a beautiful little hotel room there. It's all cobble streets. Cars can't Gorge. drive down it. And at 10 o'clock, all the restaurants and bars are open and people are sitting there having a beer at 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's just surreal. It's yeah. like the, they seem like they're all retired. They it feels magical. It really does. And then you get up into the hills a bit and you've got the cows with the bells on them and all that typical <laughs> cliche. Yeah. But it's not cliche. It's actually these people really living that life. That's the life, Yeah. Everyone has a little open fire in their house. You know, yeah, everyone's it's different. house is heated by wood. And right, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, I must admit, it's one place that every time I've been there, I sort of, it's like driving up the hill to my house. Yeah. I get to a certain point and all of a sudden I feel all the pressure go and I can just... You just breathe. <laughs> yeah. So you don't, you just, you haven't got any big plans? No big plans. I'm really just seeing whether where where the universe gonna is going to take me, you know, seeing where the modeling thing will take me, being grateful for every single opportunity I get and just going with it. So when you're in, say, Milan and places like that and you haven't got work, yes. do, you, do you go and do the tourist thing or do you just veg at home? I mean, depends. Sometimes I'll go out and tourist, be touristy for the day. But a lot of the time, I mean, when you're living somewhere, you just kind of chill. Yeah, when especially when you work. I know, yeah. I know exactly. You just, you're like, okay, this is my day off. I'm going to watch a movie, take a shower, do like a self-care day, maybe go for a walk, get my groceries, you know? Um, what else do I need to do? Do I need to go to the chemist for anything? It's like, you know, it's where you live. you got to do yeah. your chores. Yeah. No, it's cool. It's really cool. <laughs> so... 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was expecting you to have bigger plans, but you just you can't be disappointed if you. Is that no. what it is? Is it maybe more, yes, but also because you don't I know think... the world's your oyster, and you're just waiting for it to give you what. I think for me, I'm just a very relaxed person and I'm just excited to have all the opportunities I have. Like in Milan, I'm doing castings every day. I'm working most days. Just, no, no, it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty good and for it's me. It's an amazing place. Yeah, it's beautiful. And my ultimate goal is just to travel. You know, this yeah. is why I'm doing the modeling thing. I want to see the world. I want to meet amazing people. All my best friends live all over the world now. This is the life I want to live. I want to see the world and I want to work while I'm doing it. It's pretty amazing. I must admit that our latest trip that Beck and I have done, it was every city we had friends in that city. That's what I'm saying. And that's how it is for me now as well, especially being a model because everybody is flying in from places, right? So I'm meeting people from the Netherlands, from Hungary, from all over the world. And now I have friends in every city, you know? Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, uh, we just find it surreal. Like we've got Tess in Rome. Yeah. And we know anytime we go to Rome, we can go stay at her place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And anytime we're in Europe, she's going to contact us. Do you need a model? Yeah. And she'll fly into it. And we've got Shay who's traveling the world. To a little, she no fixed address. Yeah. She's basically just bouncing. I think she's in Texas at the That's moment. That's like me. No fixed address, just living life, traveling, meeting amazing people and working. Yeah. And the amount of models that I'm actually meeting, more in Europe, not so much America. They seem to be landlocked a little bit in America. In America, yeah, because They it's, tend to be an LA model, a Miami model, yeah. or a New you York kind of, model. You definitely get divided into one of those to, three places. Yeah, and but yeah. then you don't tend to travel much. No, right? you don't. You really don't. You stick to kind of what you know. But they don't even seem to travel to but Europe. But it's because it's all different looks. Like LA girls, you know, often have well, yeah, LA was swimsuit the, girls, I guess. Yeah, but they yeah. also were the start of e-com. Like, yes. LA yes. was LA a big so much e-com. E uh -huh. Whereas M Miami is much more the swimwear. Yes, the, that's true. Yeah. yeah that, that swim week kind of swim, thing. Yeah. Um, but New York is more being that sort of edgy, High bitchy. End. Yeah, exactly. Um, type of stuck up. Yes. But cool. <laughs> I, I like stuck the up look. Cool. Stuck yes. up but cool. But then you get to Europe and it's sort of like, more feminine, a bit more girly, a little bit more pretty. Yeah. Classy. Classy. That's a great word for it. It's just got a little bit, it's like that bit, it's been polished. Yes. Yes. It has it's just it's got been that, refined. It's, and quite often it doesn't feel like a copy. No. It feels like an original. Yes. Even though it might be similar to something else, it still feels that there's heart and soul behind yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Whereas some of the stuff I'm finding, especially in American ads and that, it just feels, it's only AI. Yeah, a little in bit. In fact, how are you feeling about AI? I don't know. I mean, I like AI for a lot of reasons. One oh, for making like, you look pretty on TikTok. Yes, exactly. But that's not you then. <laughs> but that's not you. <laughs> but it's cool now. It's a like, robot. They're going to take you over. Yeah. You'll just be able to, there's an incredible movie. I can't remember what it was called. But the people were pretty much plugged into machines, big fat lumps yeah. on bed, being drip fed. But they all lived in the AI world and these people looked the hottest friggin' people yeah. in the world. They got to do the coolest stuff in the world. Yeah. It's, while they're just yeah. this blob on a bed. I mean, I do think it's taking work away from models. Like some brands are actually using AI models. Did you, yeah, you heard of yeah. um, Levi's? <laughs> Levi's you is know using that, uh -huh, yeah, AI you're models. Seeing it there. But it is cool. Like I had someone come out to me and be like, oh my God, you look like you're like AI. I was like, oh my God, that's an amazing compliment. No, it's not because it means a robot can take your place and I don't need you anymore. <laughs> no, you don't want that. I should have been like, that's rude. <laughs> yeah, the, how dare they? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, know, I don't know, and just, there, there's lots of people scared of it. There's, like, I like AI there to help us to do things easier and better, but I don't like AI that's going to replace us. Right. So the whole thing with the uh, actor strike at the moment and things like that, well, there's a little bit of part about what's going to happen with AI. You can't play with your microphone. Oh, I'm because, with it. <laughs> sorry about all the noise you just sorry, heard. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize. I was waiting for two seconds, so you guys it's, will live. It's cool. No, I can always cut it out. <laughs> oh, or I could make it louder and everyone will like it. <laughs> no, it just, it was like, there's a very good chance. Well, they're already starting. They're starting to do AI movies. Yeah. No actors. 
That's no cameraman, no makeup artist. Well, these actors, no... they go to school, they study for this, you know, it's their whole world. They've dreamt about it for years and then all of a sudden, no, no, we don't need an actual actor. We've got AI. Like, it's so well, upsetting. Even, even you go another step further, the directors and the people yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. I've just been listening to a, po- a Joe Rogan podcast. I can't think of the name. The, the, he was a stuntman. Mm-hmm. And... He's just a stuntman, he's working out, and someone offered him to do a movie. He's never done a movie before in his life. The first movie he ever made was John Wick. Mm, wow. Imagine that being your first movie ever. So now he's done all four, yeah. and you look at the actors and that, but then he's talking about the experiences and the way they do things and that. All of that is so clever. They're, all the sort of deep thinking they've done behind every single scene to get this effect at the cheapest they can do. So these companies who invest money want to make so much more money. But they've, they've been so clever to work out ways of making things work quicker and still look great. Right. But all of that's going to be at risk as, oh, we'll just get someone to type some stuff onto a yeah. computer. It's easier that way. No, it's not fair. It really isn't. I've seen a couple of things. AI doesn't scare me at all for me. Mm-hmm. AI will never be able to do me. Mm. My brain's just too messed up. <laughs> no, it is. It's AI can't predict what I'm going to shoot next. It doesn't. No, it can't. It, it really can't, can't. And AI still can't do emotion. It's absolutely terrible at emotion. Yes. Yeah, that is true. But that's where the e-com, think how many girls are going to be out of a job if, especially China, takes on AI rather than book those models. So, what, you're going to have a it's thousand so models out of work It's so scary because like these that. girls, they, you know, there's a lot of girls who fly in from Russia, from Ukraine, from all over the world, right, who this is it's how they have to live. They're sending money back to their from, families, yeah. you know. It's the only way that they're keeping their families exactly. alive. It's the only way um, they can make a legitimate... They're escaping, you know, for some people, terrible lives. Terrible lives. And then they're going to China, for example, and now AI's taking their job and they can't make money. It's terrifying, and then they get in debt to their agencies. So. <laughs> so, let's go, and normally our, most of the time, Beck and I talk about food and movies and mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. Because we work in the industry so much, it's good for us to talk crap about nothing. Yeah. But with you, I think there's things that some of the people who listen to our podcast would be really, really interested in. Okay. But you need to be 100% honest. All right. All right. Yes. So let's first go on to photographers. Mm -hmm. Let's start off back when you weren't getting paid. Okay. You you always had paid jobs. Yes. I'm talking about more your test shoots and more the stuff the agency was sending to you. What advice can you give to those photographers that would make it better for you as a model to be able to give them better pictures or make right. you more comfortable? This is a good question. Definitely put music on. Yes. Um, like fun yeah, music, Swift. not weird music. Taylor really Swift. Wants that. Taylor, um, Swift. Taylor Swift for me is my favourite. I feel like it helps me emote better. It helps me get out of kind of the stiff, awkward um, posing. It helps me feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, also, like, say, if you like the mo- what the model's doing, be like, oh, that looks really nice. That looks beautiful. Well done. This is good. Uh, encourage, because it makes me feel like, oh, okay, this looks good. You know, I'm not looking stupid right now. Yeah, they're happy. Yeah, exactly. Um, what else? Uh, have snacks, because no one likes a hungry model. <laughs> So you reckon they should have cupboards like we have? <laughs> yes, you have. Peter has the best cupboard. His fridge is completely stacked with water, soft drinks, and he has snacks. It's really good. Lollies. Yes, lollies. <laughs> <laughs> sugar. Yes, Quick sugar. hit sugar. Because you know yourself, you've had your hair and makeup done. The, the next thing you can't, you can't eat a yes. sandwich. Yeah, exactly. So the you know, next best you need thing is are just, like just you know, bits of sugar that get you a bit of a <laughs> yeah. buzz till you go on. Um, what else? I like, for me, I like seeing the pictures. I hate it when the photographer doesn't want to show me the pictures. It makes me feel like, well, why are you hiding the pictures from me? <laughs> like, why can't I see? Because then I don't know if the pictures look good. Beck was on a shoot yeah. in Barcelona. Never saw a single picture on the whole shoot. See, Not that's scary. I don't the like that. And then it was like a month later. But when Beck got them, she loved them. They were amazing. Yeah. She said, if they just shown me 
what, I, it most of them would have taken the shoot yeah. would have been even better this because what, I would have been able to get a buzz off. Exactly. It makes you feel, okay, these look good. Here's what I can do. Here's what the model can do to improve it. Or um, you can go, oh, yes. I'm getting bags under my eyes. Maybe I've got yes, to pose a little bit move higher. Yes, I've got to move my chin up towards the light. Or, or, yeah, you can see. Exactly. Yeah. And what else? What else for photographers? To help photographers, um, to help the photographers that. What You've else? got to realise that even when you were 17, 16 and 15, you were still a better model than I would have ever shot. Yeah. But a lot of them would still make a mess of the shoot because... Advice to make a model feel more comfortable. Uh, for me, I like it when the photographer asks me, hi, can I like touch this? Can I move this? Um, and then I can be like, yes, it's okay. You don't have to ask me if you can touch me, but it just makes me feel like, oh, they respect my boundaries. Yeah, you have know? I ever touched you? No, without asking. You, uh, Yes, but like... No, if... I've only touched your hair. Yeah, that's true. And even then I say, do you mind? He I... always asks me. Of it's... course, it's your... And I think Peter is actually one of the reasons why I feel if somebody just touched me, I feel like, what is he? what are they doing? Yeah, that's creepy. Because I grew up shooting with Peter and he was always super respectful and asked me questions and makes me feel as if I also have an opinion and I'm also... You love touching the microphone. You're worse oh. than Beck. Beck yes. used to pull her hair across it. Sorry about all the Sorry touching. Sorry about all the noise. No, that's, that's right. It's, it's <laughs> but no, I'm glad you said that because I really have gone out of my way to work with models to make them 100% comfortable. I want them... I never want a model going past their boundary. Yeah. Or maybe they might want to push a bit and say, really? And we'll try, have a look at this. No, yes. look at your face. Uh -huh. You're not comfortable doing this. Yes. No more. Yeah. And things like that. To me, at the end of the day, I want an amazing photo. Yes. That's all I want is an yeah. amazing photo. Exactly. And I just feel that too many photographers have an ulterior motive. Yeah, well, I've been It on might so many be issues. obvious, but you, so, you, you see it. Yeah, especially when I got to New York City, when I first turned 18, everyone was trying to shoot me naked, right? This is what everyone wanted to do. How many times they put you in shirts without a bra and then can you lean forward a little bit? Yeah, and yeah. then can you look, can you tilt your head down and look up, right? Yeah. No, I can't do that, I'm sorry. Can you call me daddy? Yeah, essentially, <laughs> right? <laughs> They're so obvious, aren't they? And they are. you know, there's no hope in hell you're ever going to use that picture in your folio. Not, not for me. No, I wouldn't never. ever use it. I wouldn't. But most models wouldn't because most models that are working in the fashion industry are like the opposite side, 180 degrees away mm -hmm. from what these photographers are trying to get you. Yes. And the photographers don't realise that there is no long-term work in men magazine work. No. It's a once-off. Oh, we've seen her boobs now. We don't need We're to bored. see them again. We're bored. <laughs> Go away. We'll find somebody else we've never seen before. Yeah. Whereas in a fashion magazine, you could have your boobs out 40 times, but nobody cares because they're not looking at that. They're looking at the picture, the, as, the a picture whole, the as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is, yeah, it's so yeah. obvious though, isn't it? You wonder why they don't get it. No. Yeah, it's an odd one. All right, so is that all you're going to say about yeah, photography? Yeah, that's all I have right. to say about that. So now we'll do 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. What advice can you give to models? Not models at three or four or five. Like aspiring models? models? Aspiring models, yeah. Most models are really only starting around 15, 16. 16 is kind of the age where they get into it. Yeah. Um, okay, so if you're practicing posing, I recommend doing it in a mirror so you can no see. No way. Yes, so you can see everything you're doing. Are you talking about your body or looks, your face? Yeah, you're just kind of learning which where to put body your or face? body and face. Really? You can look at, do emotions in the mirror, different emotions. You can kind of see just for the first time how to like pose your body, which angles look Body, good. I agree with you 100%. Um, but face, I've do you also notice? Heard, I don't know if it was from you. What? But when you stare at a doorknob and pretend it was a yeah, camera. Yeah, that's a me thing. Yes, he taught me this. Um, this is for the emotions. Um, and you pretend that's the camera lens and you do it into the camera lens for like five minutes every day. And it's supposed to really help you emote. Have you done it? Or is it I like, have gee, done it. you did it once and you got bored? No, I've done it a couple times when I was like, when, whenever my mom's like, your photos are kind of looking the same lately. Like, can you change it that's, up? Yeah, that's the only problem. It's not, it's, 
you're not the problem, yeah. it's the work you're doing is the yes. problem. Yeah. They don't want emotion, they want you people looking at the clothes. They want this sterile, pretty face, Yeah. so they just start it's looking like a doll. at the clothes. That's yeah, what it's, it's called. So it's it's like you're just like a doll. Whereas, and I keep harping on it, the big money is the emotion side, yeah. and, but you won't pick up that until people see the emotion. Yeah. The biggest problem with posing your face in a mirror, if I brought a mirror out now in front of this camera and held it in I front of you. I would try. I would like be like, oh, this looks nice. You would, <laughs> yeah, like... you would change your face <laughs> instantly. But that's not your face. No. That's your mirror face. You're right, you're right. It's definitely the doorknob. Peter taught me that. So yeah, the most important, and what did I do even today on the shooting? Some of my favorite expressions is when I said, Go to your favourite place. Yes. Where would you wear this? Mm -hmm. You felt it straight away. Yeah, definitely. I saw a massive change. In and the it's way I am tiny, now. This, the last trip to Europe taught me so much. I spent a good two hours with Tess and two hours with Beck, just one on one, filming them close up on their face. Because I've got, I got to a brick wall with both of them. They're both doing amazing, but yeah. sorry, I want you better now. Yeah, I've seen this before. You've run the four minute mile. I want you to do it in under four minutes now. Yeah, yeah, crazy. And it was amazing how they just become a little bit like you. You knew, well, oh, that's pretty. Yeah, it's not. This is nice. This yeah. is not. Well, nice is not going to cut it anymore. No, you got to be bigger. It has to be amazing. Mm -hmm. So, and it was amazing how much Beck. We I filmed a bit of Beck. Beck was actually the one that was the more obvious to me. So she's just sitting on a bed, the tight close shops, we're going through emotions. And then I just noticed, so I kept watching her body and she's doing all these motions, but she has the exact same, same body. body. Yeah. So well, the opposite for me, I struggle to uh, change the facial expressions. I have to really think about that, but the body, I. No, you changed fine. instantly today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stand wide leg, cross your legs. Yeah, it's, it's very your easy when you're, when you're thinking about a place you want to be when you're thinking about something happy, something sad. It's very easy for that to show through on your face. Oh, yeah, but, but it's even easier the next step. Yeah. It's so much easier next yeah. step. <laughs> See how you're sitting now. Mm -hmm. All right, sit like a tramp. <laughs> See how you feel. Yeah. You didn't even have to think. No, you don't. Cross your legs and put your hands on your... See? It just happens. It just yeah. happens. And this is, uh, this is campaigns like Guess and that. So often some of those pictures they showed you and wanted you to copy, it's a good chance they knew that if you got into that shape, it would come you would pull your face. that face. Right, exactly. And it's more where I want to go and it's more where you should go. And I know I'm, I preach and preach and preach and preach this. I so think you can go to super next level you should be able to get to a Miranda Kerr type level. Yeah. But you can only do that with your face now, with I know. your expressions. <laughs> You've already had your shitty boyfriend. I you have had, I've it, had a couple shitty right, boyfriends. So everybody has told you you need to have that shitty boyfriend. <laughs> Everyone told me to you need emotion. to be more traumatized. Tra Mika. Yeah, you're going to be traumatized. You need some trauma. Um, I have received it. <laughs> but see, those are things you can now grab down on. They're, they're things that you can bring think in. Think about. Think about or let it feel. And it, what it, thinking is one thing, it feels another. So I can instantly make you feel uncomfortable. It's the easiest thing in the world. I don't have to do this. Right, <laughs> if, if, you, if you, you just felt it there, didn't you? Yeah. Instant. Right, so you need to f learn how to feel what makes you feel good. Right. But you started to today. Yeah. Right, you did this. Yeah. And you found the confidence. Your, in no, it. you found the spot. Yes. <laughs> you were drifting all oh, there, and Becca's doing it more and more now since we did the thing. I want to do a shoot with Beck. We should do a shoot with Beck. I want. I want to shoot. Well, if you her. don't disappear, I know. She's back in I'm two weeks, so she'd weeks. love to do a shoot with you. And so Rara, fun. absolutely would. I would love to shoot with she's Rara. Off, she's off to Greece oh, now. Okay, she's living the life as well. Everyone's in Europe right now. Everyone. Well, she, yeah, she's picked up, I can't, don't know if I can make it public, she's picked up a really good gig, a six week gig, oh, wow. presenting mm -hmm. or something in Greece. So it's That's really amazing. cool. Yeah. But, good for her. Exciting. No, but it is good. I love seeing the doors open yeah. for the models. I, it's I see, really nice. I, yeah, all the hard work I see, all of you girls put in, all the crap work you put, it's so good. I'm wrapped that you got guests because I yeah. that, love that brand for a start. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it's really, really cool because hopefully this will 
maybe get more people to see Open you. Open more doors, exactly. See you as who you really need to be seen. Mm -hmm. Because I'm over rich kids being getting the breaks. <laughs> because, never their mom, <laughs> because their mums are super rich or they're famous. Yeah. I'm over the influenzas getting the breaks. Influenza. Well, they are. They're like a disease. <laughs> Well, yeah, they're not real. It's all, it's all fake. <laughs> and I've got, I've got a couple of good friends, one's an influenza, and she makes a hell of a lot of money, but she still is her. She's so down to earth. Like she'll say, yeah, I'm getting paid shitloads of money to talk about this shit, but I actually really use this. Yeah. So, and the way she talks here, she doesn't change. That's how she is every day That's in her amazing. life. That's really And good. I think whereas uh, some of the influencers I've met, they're just so different in real life to what they are, what you see online and what you you get what I'm talking about is you meet them and go, you're nothing like what came across. And most of them are so insecure and they keep dropping their head on you. And right. Have you seen that yourself? With Do you get to meet many of the girls? From? That are influencers. Mm, oh, sorry, I've had a lot of influencers in my life. Well, so yeah. you're an influencer, but you're not. You don't. I do, don't do quite a lot of influencing, really. You I, don't do the all the ad crap, and no, I don't. I, um, Which is very smart of you because you've got a big following. Yeah, I just want everyone to like me instead of. So how big is your following? I've got like almost a million on TikTok and then almost half a million on Instagram. Which is flopping. Are you finding yeah. it flopping? Instagram is flopping for everybody. It really uh, is. Do you do Facebook at all? I do Facebook. I have only like, I don't know, 150,000. Facebook's like meta is flopping. Yeah. Have you yeah. done Twitter? No, never. Why not? I've never even started a Twitter. I don't think. I had a Twitter for ages and really didn't do much with right. it. Right. And I have a tiny following. I don't care. Yeah. But I love the fact that I don't have to worry about something being pulled down. I don't have to worry oh. about someone saying anything. You it just, can't post I, this, yeah. You can't post this, you can't do this, you can't do that. Yeah, no, I've never really gotten into Twitter. I mean, the first thing I do when there's drama or something is run to Twitter just so I can see. what's see. happening. Well, because you know Twitter, you can just put photos and videos yeah. up. You don't have to. And there's so many people that are doing that. I can't believe how big the NFT community is. Even I know, the NFT I'm community so is huge. I'm against the NFT community. I went to uh, the Board Ape Festival. Board, what's a board party? Ape festival party? No, it's an it's an NFT. Um, in New York City, it was amazing. It was like I was going to say it would have to be in America, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. The lights were so bright. Everyone was really nice. There were so many models there. What'd you say? The lights were so bright. Yes. What they do you mean? The lights the were whole so... place up with different colored lights. Oh. Mm -hmm. So it was like Fairyland. Yes, it was like Fairyland. And one thing I'm surprised, how come you didn't get to meet Taylor Swift? I would have um, thought you'd pull some strings or do no, something. I didn't even have tickets to her concert, so strings were pulled. <laughs> oh, so you got in? Yes, but I uh, didn't get to meet her. But I don't think, I think it's good that I didn't. I think that I would have just cried. <laughs> Are you on that belief that you should never meet your hero? Yeah. Because she'll only be disappointed? No, her, she's amazing. I don't think I'd ever be disappointed by Taylor Swift, but then again, I haven't met her. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Um, I can't. So my hero, so, you know, some of my heroes are coming. Yeah. There's still one hero. Well, there's a couple of heroes, people I really look up to that I could meet one day. Maybe Tarantino is one of them. No, oh, I mean. And you've got to watch Kill Bill Part One and Part I Two. I know. I will. No, everybody. Can you handle very gory stuff? Yeah. You really. It's such a girl movie. Really. It's girl power. Okay. Uh, it's so a girl power. Well, I love movie. girl power movies. I love girl power anything. And Uma Thurman is like the. Beautiful. Oh, just, she gets crap beaten out of her time and time again. She keeps getting back up. Yeah. No, it's actually, it's Beck's favourite movie in oh, the world. Wow. And it's like Harry Potter might just I love it. Harry Potter. Nah. You don't like Harry Potter? No, because it's, it's like Star Wars. It's the dark side. <laughs> Everyone talks slow. Right. It was too slow. And it's like this meaningful one word. Yeah, I get that. And I don't... I like, love Harry Potter. I know you would. <laughs> so you'd like Lord of the Rings too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Nah. Can't do any of that slow talk. <laughs> the, all of the slow talk. So yeah, Star like Wars. Uh, Fair enough. That's just the main thing. I just... As soon as the movie starts getting into a slow talk, I... Although, I did watch... Is it the prequel? The one the that prequel? Tim Burton one? did. 
Is it Tim Burton? And From Johnny Depp was in. Yeah, it was a one that came out recently. Oh, I didn't see the recent one. I've only seen I don't, the I don't think Harry it's Potter. part of a... Pro, no, I know which one you're talking you know, about, but I didn't see it. I think it was called, like... I don't know. I didn't even realise it was cool tied to Harry Potter. Potter. It was only Beck that told me. Yeah. And it was sort of like, no, but I actually enjoyed this. This actually had... Oh, you did see the... Pre- That's strange. I enjoyed it a lot, actually. Yeah. Whereas Harry Potter, I before the first... End of the first one, I was over it. And then there was... Um, there's another show, Wednesday. And like, Wednesday, this did you just watch felt, Wednesday? I started to, but it just felt like Harry Potter. Fair enough. It just went down. I don't know. It's a certain type I loved of movie. Wednesday. Whereas the movies that. <laughs> the movies that really have worked for me are like things like Kill Bill. Kill Bill. Um, Django. Oh my God. You, you've never seen a Tarantino movie, have you? Uh, I don't know. No, you I haven't. Think so. Tarantino is very, very clever. He's, some of his movies, he rewrites history. Wow. So he does a movie, like he did a movie, um, Inglorious Bastards, which is about the Jew kill, the Jew hunters. Right. Who would try and hunt down the Jews and kill them or capture them. And Tarantino had this group of American soldiers that were in the heart of America and they're fighting in the underground there. And, um, Hitler gets killed in a bomb in a cinema. Nothing to do with how he really died, no. but that's how he set up. And same with um, uh, Once Upon a Time in... Um, oh, where's it Once Upon a Time in... Oh, I'm freaking going brain dead. <laughs> oh, people are going to kill me now. <laughs> it's his last They'll movie. Comment. It's uh, Brad Pitt and all of that. They'll right. comment. They'll, yeah. I just got They'll right tell there. you which one it is. But even that, they changed the Manson. It's about the Manson killers. And it changed how the ending happened. Oh, wow, the Manson Com- killers. He just completely changed. Oh, in fact, I just heard something today. I don't know. I trust. About I tr- the hippie I, ones, the hippies? I trust Joe Rogan, so I'm going to actually say it because yeah. I actually trust everything. It turns out that... I don't know if there's solid proof, but the CIA was behind the Manson killings. Oh, my God. They had them all completely stoned on LSD because they wanted to discredit the hippie community. That's awful. I know. If it's true, it's as bad as what's been no said. No way. About. That's... Well, you, you know that they're saying the CIA killed JFK. Yeah, I heard that. Right. And then doesn't even make the news in America. Like... The CIA doesn't get elected. They are just there. Every president has to bow to the men in black in the CIA. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that wrong? So wrong. Like People like Barack Obama, who had all these great things he wanted to do, I wonder how much his hands were tied. By the CIA? Yeah, but then I then think about Trump. Nobody could tie his hands. No, or, no one so was shutting how that would, guy up. <laughs> how can you shut up a, a Torito? An orange Torito. You couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is all conspiracy theory. But I, when they were actually, there's a book. Uh, I can't remember the name of the book. I really should look it up, but I can't. I'll try and find it. But there's a book that was written all about what the experiments of putting super LSD on all the, the Manson families and then talked them into doing what they did. I don't know how true it is, but I don't know. I always think is if there's a little bit of smoke, there's a fire sitting behind it. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I. Uh, but you do need to see. Kill I have Bill. seen. I've seen that movie. Which one about the hippies? Which one about the hippies? Uh, the Tarantino one. Yeah. Oh, so you've seen the one where uh-huh. Sharon Tate. Yes, Sharon Tate. And it has seen, Margot I've Robin. Seen, yes. So did you yeah. like that movie? I, th- I thought it was terrifying. I was scared. Did, did you get the movie though? Yes. I saw it with my mom and I was, I think, I was no, really I mean, young. No, no, this it. only came out a couple of years ago. Yeah, I saw it when I was like 15. No, it only came out like two years ago. Oh, maybe. Maybe not that. Maybe not. No, this, was, this isn't a documentary, this is a Tarantino movie. Mm-hmm. Maybe not then. You need to see Kill Bill. I'm going you to need watch to, Kill you Bill. Need I'm going to go home and I'm going to watch it now. All right, so you wore the Kill Bill shirt. Yes. You have to watch Kill Bill 1. Okay. And Kill Bill 2? I don't know if you can handle two in one night. Okay. It's got, I think it works it, out to about is four it real, hours. Oh, yeah. Too long, maybe. They're long and there's a lot of dialogue, but it is so cool. Mm-hmm. It's seriously cool. All right. Well, I'll give it a watch. It's strength of a strength of a woman. I it know. really is. That's amazing. And if you do really, really like that movie, 
There's another one that didn't do very well at the box office. If you like that, you'll love it. It's called Death Proof. Death Proof. And it's about, like, the second, it's done in two halves. And the second half are all these models and makeup artists and stunt chicks travelling through America. Cool. <laughs> and there's a psycho trying to kill them in a car. Oh, my God. Terrifying. No, it's actually, it's all in a day. So it's not it like sounds a, cool. Yeah, it's it's I mean, actually a cool movie. Yeah, it sounds like a cool movie. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, I, I think after I've pressured you like crazy uh -huh. to watch Kill Bill, mm -hmm. since you, if you, it's your fault, you put on a Tarantino shirt. You I know, know what? it was a cool shirt. And that's the shirt out of Kill Bill. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, cool. Cool? Yeah. So it's very violent. I'll, I'll let you know if I can handle it. But some of the violence is, in, you know, some, it's your sword and just cuts the two arms off and just blood sprays everywhere oh, like out of a fountain. Yeah. So it's it's surreal. Yeah. Like so, you start. It doesn't feel real. It yeah. feels just surreal. I get that. So, but there's some. Yeah. The story though, it's. Yeah, I don't want to tell you. So you need to watch don't it. Don't spoil it. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil it. But you, yeah, <laughs> I really want you to watch it. When I see you next week, you got to tell me if you like. If you don't like one, don't watch two. Okay, I'll let you. But know. if you like one, you will love two. I would love two. All right, All right I'll let you cool. know. Oh, it's been awesome having you here. Thank you. And I'm glad that you're, and even though it's horrible for you, I'm glad you're in Australia for a little bit. Thank you. I'm glad to be here as well. Uh, we do a couple more shoots before you disappear, you and will. maybe we'll do a shoot with you and Beck. Perfect. I yeah, love all that. right, before we go, how would you want to be shot with Beck? What's the story? I feel like we should do something outside. Yeah, but what's the story? Like? I love Beck. I don't know. Something cool. Like, like a guest campaign type kind thing? Kind of type thing I think we should do. Like so it's movie. like girls as best friends, yeah, girls, girls as best sisters. Friends, sisters even. Um, something sweet. Something sweet. Yeah. In denim? Yeah, we should do denim. That's cool. Or would you want to do grunge? Denim. Denim. I don't like doing grunge. You don't like grunge. Beck loves grunge. I know, but she's, she did looks you, good did in you grunge. See, did you see her grunge in the kitchen? I think Picture? so. Probably. I've seen so many pictures of Beck I was in Paris. Now. Just recently. Maybe. Maybe. Probably. Probably. Maybe. Probably. Anyway, so... Uh, yeah, I think I've seen this picture. Seen that picture. She looks amazing. So you don't do she grunge? She does grunge so cool. Like, I couldn't do that. I just wouldn't feel comfortable. I would, it, it would show on my face. But So you, in real life, would you ever sit in the kitchen? No, not like that. On a kitchen that. bench? No. 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 She, she's so freaking cool. But see, in real life, she would sit she in the kitchen. Would. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> but th this is exactly why every model is who they are. Yeah. And it's really Everybody important. Everybody is different. That you, you get to set your brand and you'll attract the clients that see your brand. But I still think that every time before you go to sleep, if you're just saying, my eyes, is what will make me famous. Yeah. What I say with my eyes is more chance to get me a billboard to what I do with my hand. True. 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 Absolutely true. And start staring at doorknobs. Yes. <laughs> and if you don't like gym, don't do it. <laughs> I know I know so many models that do no gym whatsoever yeah. and they eat crap food, but their metabolic rate's fine. And you know, when they're not hungry, they just they might eat for you know six, seven hours, mm. and then they'll eat a burger or a pizza. Exactly. And then they might eat for, but they're not. So I've never ever seen. I know all the signs of anorexia. Every, I've never seen it in any of the girls that I regularly work with. Yeah. And they're all just naturally. If you saw the crap Beck eats. And this is she's, why I love Beck. She's so fun. I love her. Yeah, pizzas and burgers and McDonald's <laughs> are her favourite foods. I love McDonald's as well. Oh, yuck. Anyway, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Lovely to talk to you.